Hey everyone! Today I want to show you guys how we can make a doormat. I'm going to be using a doormat that I picked up from Target, but normally I pick mine up from Ikea. I will be sharing links for all of the products I'm using in this video in the description. So if you get to the end and if you're looking for something, check the description real quick for a link. And if for some reason I forgot to post something, just comment and I'll get right to you with a link. Okay, so what I'm going to be using as my stencil is freezer paper. And I'm going to show you quickly how to create the stencil. I use just Reynolds freezer paper. You can get it at any grocery store, Walmart, Target, anything like that. But I'll drop a link for you guys too. So I'm going to show you quickly on our freezer paper. I'm gonna fold over just a scrap piece. You can see there's a duller side and a shinier side. And we're going to sh uh, use the shiny side down. So I'm gonna show you how we do the stencil for it all. Okay, so I'm going to be using my doormat from Target. It's 18 inches by 30 inches. So I'm going to use that first as a guide. I already have my stencil already set up and ready to go, but I'm going to show you guys how to create it first so that you know. So I'm, I grabbed a square over here in Design Space. If you are having trouble seeing where my mouse is, I use this little circle so you can see. Okay, so we're going to do 18 inches, or we're going to do 30 inches wide by 18 inches high. We can go down to the bottom left-hand corner here and zoom in and out so we can see our project. And I'm going to be using um, the Gabriel Weiss font from the font, it's the Friends font, if you're a fan of the Friends TV show, which I am a massive fan of. I'm going to type out my text, it's just going to say Welcome Friends in the Friends style font. And I'm going to go up to the alignment tool here and center my text. And then I'm going to go over to the font and I'm going to change it to Gabriel Weiss. It's Gabriel Weiss's Friends font and again I'll link, um, I'll link that for you guys. So what I'm going to do is now on my, my stencil that I already have over here, I added the little circles into the font between friends. You can do that too. You can leave it as is. It's up to you guys, but my stencil is going to look a little different because I'm not going to go through all of that. This is just quickly to show you how to do the stencil. So when we are cutting a stencil, we can do it in two pieces and that's fine. I prefer to do it in one if I can. So I measured this. This is my gray is what is going to be our mat. The black is my text. And I can see that it's already 26.3 inches wide, which is larger than we can cut with our Cricut without, uh, in a single cut. 23 and a half inches is as far as we can go. So I'm going to set it down to 23 and a half, and that way I can't go bigger than that. Now you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, it's up to you guys. Use the gray rectangle as your guide for how big you want your text. I'm going to go a little bit smaller, I'm going to go at about 22 and a half for the purpose of my stencil. So now that I have this all measured and my guide's there, I'm going to go ahead over to my layers panel, hit the little I and hide that. And then I'm going to pick up another shape here. And I want to make that just a little bit bigger than my font. So I've got this, I'm gonna go up to arrange and send this to the back, that way I can use it as a guide, I can see my text. And I'm gonna select all and I'm going to go up to align. I'm going to center horizontally and I'll center vertically. And we want to make sure again that our rectangle here is not bigger than what we can cut on our Cricut. And the biggest we can cut is 23 and a half by 11 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that rectangle and then we'll go back up to the align and we'll do the center and horizontal alignment again. And then all you need to do is attach this. It is going to all turn one color, show you how. Attaches right here at the bottom. Instead of going through the process of slicing, we're just attaching. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit down here just so you guys can see. It did all turn one color, but it's going to cut out just fine. 
it won't be an issue, I promise. Now, if you are using a dark font, you can always turn this lighter and you can see exactly how it's going to cut. Just change it lighter. It, this doesn't reflect what's actually cutting, so don't worry about the color. So I'm going to go back to my original stencil where I have all of the dots already placed in and everything, and I'm going to change it to that lighter color so you guys can see how I have it set up. So this is how it's going to cut, and what we're going to do is we're going to take out all of the inside pieces, and we'll have just a big rectangle left, and we can use that as our stencil. So now what I do, I'm going to click Make It. I mirror my image, and I do this because... And this banner that comes up here is just letting you know you're going to need a bigger mat. So I'm going to click continue, select my, I'm going to be using my maker. So I'm going to select the one I'm using. And while my materials load, I'm going to show you guys quickly. On my mat, you can see it is shiny side up, but that is what we are putting down. That is the side we are ironing on. So that's why I mirrored my image. Oop, I don't want to cut felt. So we're going to browse all materials and there is a freezer paper setting, which is perfect for us. We're gonna click that, push done. I'm gonna set my computer aside and I'm going to go ahead and load my mat. When loading our mats, we always remember, kind of nudge it in a little bit as it's loading. That will make sure it's loaded properly. So I'm going to go ahead and push the cut button when it starts flashing. All right, and now it's going to cut my stencil. Now I am using a 12 by 24 blue mat. It's light grip, so it's not as sticky, but my mat has also been used quite frequently, so it's even less sticky than a brand new mat. So when doing this, you wanna be careful that your mat isn't too sticky. I recommend just cutting off a little strip of freezer paper first, sticking it on your mat really well, and seeing how it peels off, just to make sure that your mat isn't too sticky. Uh, freezer paper is, it's not very thick, it's very paper-like, so you wanna make sure that it's going to come off your mat okay. Now after this cuts, I will show you how I take it off my mat. I'm going to flip my mat over and I'm going to remove the mat from my freezer paper. Now we're going to need to keep the centers of some of our letters, like the O and the D. So we're going to, I like to leave those on my mat until I'm ready to use them. That way I don't misplace them, they don't get lost, especially when it's freezer paper. And I am doing this outside, so if it's a windier day, it can blow away. We don't want that. So I like to leave them on my mat until I'm ready to use them. Now what I typically do is go through and I press all of my freezer paper down to my mat and then I go back and I add the centers. You guys can add them as you go, it's up to you. Uh, and I will be doing this outside. Now I will be using Flex Seal Paint. I will show you guys all about that and I will link it for you. But that's what I'm going to be using for my paint. Now it has a rubbery kind of feeling and it doesn't take too long to dry, but you do need to do it in a well-ventilated area. Uh, that's why I prefer to do it outside. That way I don't have to worry about it in. I'm just gonna rip that off a little since I don't want it in the way. It's just the outside of my stencil, uh, it's the excess, so it's not going to bother it anyway. So what I like to do for the flex feel is do it outside. So I wait until it's a nice sunny day. That also I feel helps it dry a little bit quicker. I'm going to show you too how to check that it's nice and dry. So while this cuts, um, I'm gonna let you know too, I do have an outdoor outlet that I can use to plug in my Easy Press. If you don't have an outdoor outlet or you cannot do it outside, um, you're gonna want a big sheet of cardboard or something stable to do this on. When I'll show you guys how, even though I'm ironing it down, if I pick up the mat, the freezer paper is gonna kind of fold in, which is going to allow your stencil to disadhere from the mat. And that's not what you want. You wanna make sure it's adhered well. 
So I do it outside on my deck and I have a big sheet of craft paper, which I'll also link for you guys. I use it, my kids use it all the time for crafts and painting. So I use it myself. I just put a big sheet down, I put my mat down, uh, have some old pallet wood and branches and stuff outside that I use to hold down all four corners of my mat of the big paper and then I put the mat on that so if you don't have an outlet outside you can't do it outside just make sure it's going to be on a hard flat surface that's really important and I'll show you guys why when we're outside doing this all all right I'm going to okay so take off all my excess and then I'm going to show you guys flip my mat over and what I always do is I make sure I peel up a small section and then because this is a bigger mat and I don't have a ton of space here I'm going to just do this I'm going to carefully pull my mat and my material away from each other now again we don't need all these inside pieces so everything that's sticking to my mat is perfectly fine we don't need it so this is why I do it slowly too. Make sure you get all of your pieces down, everything that you need to keep. Hmm. All right, so we need the inside of that O. So like I said, I keep it all on my mat and I'll just peel it off after. Need the inside of the D. Okay. I'm just gonna go around here. You can see my mat is pretty well used, a little dirty, so it comes off easily. So now we're gonna take this wonderful piece outside and we're gonna adhere it to our mat and start spraying. Okay, everyone, I am all set up outside. I have my stencil placed. I already pressed most of it down. It's very, very hot out here, so it was um, a little difficult. So I went and pressed most of it, but I'll go through it with you guys quickly. I'm using the Cricut Easy Press 2, 400 degrees, 10 seconds. If you were, have the original Easy Press, I recommend 360 for 20 seconds, but pressing at 10 second intervals. And if you're using an iron, put it to the hottest setting and just press for maybe five seconds at a time and check it. Okay, the shiny side is down. Remember that. We're going to be using Flex Seal. To open it, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna poke it right in this little slot here and just lift that up and it comes right off. Now I use my excess pieces of freezer paper that I cut down and I cut down a couple extra strips. I'm going to use that to cover the mat that I don't want the flex seal to get on. I tape it to my stencil and then I tape that to the craft paper that the mat is on. I use uh, painter's tape, duct tape, scotch tape, whatever you have, just make sure it's down well. Now what you wanna do is press each section of this really well. And you see I have my centers in already and you can see it's moving but it's not lifting here's how i check to see if it lifts i get down close and i blow okay if it doesn't blow then when you're spraying the can the force of that spray isn't going to do it but i'm going to show you quickly just 410 seconds i do a lot of pressure i find that i get the best um adherence with the six by seven easy press um, I think I have just so small that I get the best control and I can control the pressure the best. So that's what I recommend. But if you have a bigger one, you can do it. It just might take you a little bit longer. So just press in all those sections down really well. So because it's so hot out, I'm going to just go ahead and do this quickly. I'm going to take all of my extra strips. It doesn't matter if it's shiny side up or down because that doesn't affect anything for this. Oops, sorry. And I have strips of duct tape that I already cut up. And I'm just going to place them around. And again, I make sure that my freezer paper is adhered to the stencil. And then I adhere it to the craft paper that I'm working on. You can see this little bit of 
mat that didn't get covered here, we want to make sure that gets covered. So I can go ahead, play around with it, do what you like, make sure it gets covered. You want the whole thing covered so um, just in case it sprays excess, you don't have to worry about it getting anywhere you don't want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and place this all down and come back because it is really hot. My phone keeps overheating. So I'm going to go ahead and place this all and then come back when it's done and we'll continue. Okay, now that I have this taped down really well in all areas, we can go ahead and we can spray. I wanna make sure everything's secure, good. And we are going to, there are instructions on the back of the can. Um, I just shake well, spray eight to 10, 12 inches from the surface using an even sweeping motion. Um, apply several even coats until all cracks or hose been, have been filled. I just do one coat. I have not needed to do more on any of my doormats so far. So just to let you know, I'm going to shake it up and then I'm going to go from left to right, right to left. That's the direction I'm going in. And then hopefully you guys will be able to see, but sometimes you're going to see down here and these uh, right on the bottom and the top pieces that you're not getting all all the way down so I'm going to spray from the top and then spray from the bottom but if you look closely you'll be able to see any spot you missed so you don't have to over spray okay so we're just going to go ahead something I want to mention too the first time you open this I recommend spraying a little bit over to the side or if you're not working in an area like this spray it off somewhere else just to make sure that it comes out the color you need it to be and it's not you know liquidy runny anything like that so keep that in mind I already this is a used can so I didn't have to do that but keep that in mind so we're just gonna go like this spray we want to make sure we're keeping the can pretty straight up Okay, I'm gonna go around, spray from the other side. I can see down here, the E and the S aren't as dark. Up at the top of the R and the E. Let me see if I can get you guys zoomed in close enough to be able to see that. Hopefully you can see, it's still so sunny out here, it's hard to see my screen. But hopefully you guys can see those little areas that aren't in so well. In person, you definitely can, so you can go in and get those. Keep it straight. All right. So check from all angles, but again, I only spray left to right, right to left. I don't do it any other way. So now what I do is I leave this for about an hour. It's really, really hot today. So it might not take as long, but I've got lunch to make and stuff like that. So I'll leave it for an hour and come back. Now the easiest way to tell if it is dry is I touch one of these pieces in the center off to the side whatever that's what I touch if it is still rubbery which you'll definitely see it looks like melted tar if you press your finger into it if it's still like that it's not dry I always wear a glove when I test it keep that in mind it doesn't come off your fingers very well I should have worn a glove while I sprayed it too but it's really hot and I'm not thinking so that's how I test to see if it's dry but again in an hour it should be especially since for me it's a nice hot sunny day and then we'll just go ahead and peel our stencil off and we'll be done all right everyone it's been about an hour so i already came out and i just released the duct tape from the graph paper that i've been working on and we're just going to slowly peel up our stencil and then i pull up the centers of my letters so in this case just the o and the d i do that last so we're just going to carefully peel it up and you can see this is dry if I touch it if it was not dry it would make again like a wet tar rubbery looking thing so we're just gonna pull this up it's okay if you rip it um, you might be able to well no you wouldn't be able to reuse this because you'd have to press it back down and you couldn't do that with the flex seal on it you can peel any direction that you'd like and you can see how we don't have any bleeds anywhere. You can see 
Uh, one thing I did want to mention, I don't seal my mats, but if you did want to seal it, I would seal it before you peel up your stencil. Flex Seal does make a clear spray, and because it does have a rubbery texture like the Flex Seal, you definitely want to spray that first. There are some outdoor sealants you can try, but I have found that it doesn't really pro pro prolong the life of the mat, so I just, I don't bother sealing it anyways. And I also leave mine on my um, enclosed, well, covered porch, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna just go ahead, you guys can see it. And that's how easy it is.